Amen. You guys could take a seat. Thank you so much, band. Um, you guys are awesome as always. Uh, so I want to just start before we get going in the message. Um, you know, our mission is very simple. Uh, we don't have an agenda. We want to inspire people to follow Jesus. And in that, we want to create authentic community, that a place where you can belong before you believe. We are so confident that we, um, in, in how we live our lives, that just by being in our presence, you will taste something. And that's our, uh, that's our heart, that in, in our presence, you will taste something about the love of God for you. So, how, we do, how do we do that? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? And that's why we do this what we do. Why, this is why we do what we do. Is we are all on a journey. We're all on a journey. Whether you are here or here, you are on your walk. You are on your journey. And our heart is to intersect with where you are and to help you and see what is your next step. So for, for some of you, and, and Sunet mentioned it, for some of you, you know, you, you've maybe been coming a while. And you maybe want to take that next step. And maybe that next step for you is a group. And you'll see we've got new groups. Uh, if you walk out the back on the wall on the right, you'll see there's new group leaders. They're going to be starting groups. Um, they're opening the groups. Their groups are opening up. Or maybe, you know, you're ready but not yet maybe. And that's okay. Next year we'll start again, Next uh, start of next year. But whatever your next step is, we want to help you take that next step because you don't know what is on the other side of that next step. It might change your life forever. Sunet mentioned, you know, we've been a part of life with us forever. But there was a time when I wasn't, when I wasn't even in church. And my life changed when someone invited me to group. And I set foot in that group and I was expecting judgment. And I met my wife. <laughs> So even if you're single looking for a wife, go to group. <laughs> but but that's, that's the heart. And through this year, on this figuring out of the journey of figuring life out, figuring out what it looks like to follow Jesus, because we, don't, we, 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 try, and, we try and redefine the word Christian because Christian comes with a loaded bunch of stuff. So we often refer to, not the Christian, but following Jesus, because there's an action to that. And what does that look like? And throughout the year, we've been looking at, okay, how can we follow Jesus by getting to know God? Because getting to know God changes everything. Because it takes the focus from us onto Him. Because that's ultimately who makes the difference. That's ultimately whose love we are living in this world. So, by getting to know God, we are getting to know the names of God this year. Not as the names of God as aliases, but the names of God as characteristics of God. And today, we're going to look at the name God the Deliverer. Not God the Delivery, like Uber Eats. <laughs> For some of us, maybe it's God the Delivery. <laughs> God, where's my, <laughs> where's my package? No. God the Deliverer, which means there's an acknowledgement that I'm in a place and He comes and takes me to a different place. So today, Leanne, our very own Leanne Fulhoun, husband of Fairy Fulhoun, who was on stage last week. So we're keeping it in the family, you see. Uh, so Leanne is going to be sharing with us a bit about her story, a bit about what God has been what she believes God has been talking to her about when we look at the name God the Deliverer. So please give a warm white point welcome to Leanne Fulhoun. Thank you. Thanks, Tian. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm hoping the second one's going to be easier than the first one. <laughs> Yeah, um, for you who don't know me, my name is Leanne Filyun. I'm married to Ferdi, the love of my life. We've been married for 31 years, and um, we have two children. Um, that's one of my favorite photographs of ours. You can see it was taken a while ago. 
And um, Philip there on the left-hand side is 27. And Mika is 22. And I love having adult kids. It's just so nice to be in a relationship with adults. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we've been um, in the very fortunate position to be part of Waypoint since before it started. And um, yeah, our family has really been blessed to be a part of this community. It has changed our lives completely. And um, a little bit about us, we own and operate a small B&B um, in town. We've been there for 17 years. It's been an amazing journey. Um, it's changed our lives. Um, it's, it's nothing what I expected my life to be like. Um, you know, we would have... We have seen how God works in amazing ways through guests um, who visit from other places in, in, in the country, other places in the world, and we've heard how he works in their hearts, in their communities, in their towns. And um, I've realized that God has a plan for every family, for every community, for every house. And the day I read Hebrews 13 verse 2, I realized that he had a plan for this BNB. I read, do not neglect to show or extend hospitality to strangers, especially among the family of believers, being friendly, cordial, and gracious sharing the comforts of your home and doing your part generously. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. So I don't know whether I've had angels stay at my house before, maybe I have, but I've experienced guests who have been like angels. And um, yeah, it's amazing. A little bit about me, I'm the eldest of three siblings. We grew up in Port Elizabeth. Uh, my dad was a policeman, and we had a very good sense of right and wrong. Um, in those days, not that it happens as often anymore, but in those days, when people broke the law, they got punished, and they had to face the consequences. And um, when I started school, we had just moved to Port Elizabeth, and... Um, I was probably a little bit overwhelmed by all the new experiences because it was a new school, new teachers, new routine, uh, new, new everything. And um, I was a very, a very shy child. I didn't say much. And because of that, I often didn't join in the kids playing. So I felt left out. I felt like I wasn't a part of that. Why? Because I was shy, I didn't take that first step to go and make friends. And um, I, yo, I didn't like sport at all, and I hated athletics. It didn't matter how hard I tried to run fast, I always ended up somewhere along, around the end, uh, last places. So I couldn't understand why it was so difficult, because I'd done my best. I'd... I really, I couldn't do any more. But in my mind, I wasn't good enough. I didn't, I didn't make it on the team. And um, yeah, that wasn't the last reason. Another silly reason, but remember, this is all in our mind. I, I grew up, um, my dad was English and my mom Afrikaans, so I had this English surname. And I went to an Afrikaans school. And the teachers didn't get the surname right. It wasn't difficult. It was Dennis. But I remember one day at high school being called Leanne Davies. And I thought, oh, man, you don't know me even. So that just further informed my idea that I didn't fit in, that I wasn't a part of the group. I wasn't good enough. And um, that created such a flawed mindset in my mind 
I was different. And it became a part of my identity. It became, it influenced so much in my life. And um, it also influenced my experience at church. I had, um, I had this idea that I had to tick boxes um, to fit in. And I just didn't tick those boxes. Uh, one of the boxes in our community that we had to tick was to attend church, to go to church on a Sunday. And um, my perception of church was it was just another box to tick. Um, and I'm probably going to give my age away now. But, <laughs> as some of you will relate, in those years, Sunday school, was, which was one of my boxes that I had to tick, we had to write a Bible study exam at the end of the year to to show them what we'd learned um, during the year in, in Sunday school. Um, another thing was I had, we had um, junior youth on Fridays, catechism, CSA at high school, and then the big box I had to tick was confirmation class. It was, it was a whole year in grade 11, um, and at the end of that year, we had this dreaded conversation with the pastor and the church council for them to make sure that we meet all the requirements to be accepted and confirmed as members of the congregation. Um, because only confirmed members of the congregation were allowed to partake in communion. And another thing why, another reason we had to be confirmed was so that our children, we would be able to have our children baptized. Um, parents um, who wanted to have kids baptized who weren't confirmed, guess what? They had to go through confirmation to be able to stand there to have their kids confirmed. Yeah, it was in my mind, if that was what I had to do to be accepted at church, then maybe there were a lot of boxes I had to tick for God to accept me to. And um, all of this created such a flawed picture of, of who God was. Um, I thought that I knew God because we'd been going to church all our lives. I didn't realize that it was a self-created image a flawed version of a God that didn't really exist. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it wasn't nice being in that mindset, in that place. So, because of that flawed um, view of religion, and remember it was all in my mind, um, and the requirements that uh, that we think that he places on us. We, we don't generally then, with that mindset, pay much attention to getting to know the real God. Um, our religion mindset carries, makes us, lets us carry a very big burden of those requirements that we think he puts on us. And then what happens? We fall short of those requirements, those self-imposed requirements. In my mind, um, if I had to tick all those boxes to be an acceptable member um, of church, then most probably the same applied to be acceptable to God, as I said. And um, some of my religion boxes that I thought I had to tick were I had to obey the Ten Commandments a big one, not to use the Lord's name in vain, to go to church every Sunday, to know that Bible. I'm sure it's that Bible study exam I wrote, we had to write that made this a big one for me. Um, to be a good person who gives money to the church, who supports uh, people in need. And another one, to send my children to Sunday school so that they in turn can become um, good, acceptable members at church. But 
none of these boxes, ticking these boxes, didn't give me, didn't add to the assurance of was I ever going to meet the criteria to get to heaven one day. Um, for me, I just was unsure. Um, I was always worried about being rejected by God because I didn't measure up. In my mind, I didn't measure up because I didn't measure up in sport. Um, yeah. And maybe not, not, or maybe being worried about whether God will reject you or not is what you've used as a reason that you walked away from church or from God. Maybe um, it was you were being put off church uh, because of the rules um, you thought would have to apply to your life, uh, because you wouldn't be able to live the life you live now. Um, and the big question really for me was, how could I be sure that any of my attempts uh, would satisfy God. What did I have to do um, to make me acceptable? And, um, you know, secretly in society, we have this um, idea that uh, meritocracy should apply. Um, that is that we feel the need to impose upon other people um, that they have to qualify those who work the hardest, who have the uh, best ability uh, or the most talent, only they are worthy to ascend to certain positions um, of authority or, or, you know, or to advance. Uh, we feel people must qualify. And because we secretly, or maybe it's just me, hold that view, we think God works in the same way. Uh, we think he has um, certain standards that we should meet. And um, in Genesis, we read about an event in the garden where the snake asked Eve a question that made her uh, doubt God's intention. In Genesis, we read, now the serpent was made, ach, was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And this trick of the snake um, made them question God's motive for that restriction. And it caused her and Adam to doubt the relationship they had with God. Uh, we know that that moment of weakness and that slip um, got them kicked out of the garden, uh, got them kicked out of paradise. Uh, there was a separation in their relationship with God. And when we read this, we think that, well, if, it, if this happened to Adam and Eve, then surely that is how God sees me and would react to me if I don't measure up. Um, and this, this scenario, um, this thoughts, these thoughts of ours feed, feeds into that view of religion that says um, only by following rules and doing works can I qualify for God's love and acceptance. Yeah, that definitely is a religion mindset. But a lot of us think like that. Um, the more I work for God, the better the chance that he would accept and love me. So, can you think, can you practically think of a relationship in life where these criteria would apply? Um, maybe in marriage or family um, or friendships. Those even be um, worthwhile relationships uh, to be in, um, what would the answer be? I think definitely not. Um, but 
we think that God puts that requirement on us. And why would we want to be in a relationship with a God that places that kind of requirement on us? God made a way to change all of this. He made a way for us to be in a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way that we are able to have a relationship with God. Um, last week, Fadi spoke about um, God, our rock, and he referenced scripture in 2 Samuel um, 22, verse 1 and 2. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In modern terms, uh, we would describe a deliverer as a savior or a person with a function of setting to set free or to, to make free. And this would be a, a person who um, save someone from a painful or bad experience. Now, in my marriage to Ferdi, God certainly, absolutely is our rock. Together we trust him for everything in our life, um, for us and for our children, for their lives too. And um, yo, we were so fortunate God worked on us um, together uh, during the same period of time, and um, he made a, God made a way to deliver us from that flawed religious mindset we had, uh, that we had to earn his acceptance, that we had to do things by ticking all those boxes um, for him to, to accept us. Um, through a whole series of events that uh, spanned a couple of years, God used people, both friends and strangers, to show us how much he loved us and how much he wanted a relationship with us. Um, as Ferdi mentioned last year, he attended um, the Mighty Men conferences in uh, the Karoo, and it was at one of those um, conferences where he came to the realization that God chose him, Ferdi, over Jesus on that cross. And um, for me, it began when um, a dear friend of mine, Erica, invited me to a, a Bible study, a woman's Bible study called Women of Peace. And that is where I experienced God as real for the first time. Um, remember, I didn't have a very good experience or inclination towards church. I really didn't want to do that Bible study because it was just, my flawed mindset was, what do I have to learn now to become a woman of peace? What do I have to do to fit into this group? And um, I found during those 12 weeks that God sees me and he cares for me and he wanted a relationship with me, with Leanne. That little girl that didn't fit in or measure up. And he showed it to me in scripture. Psalm 139 says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Sure. That was very powerful, and it still is today, and that applies to each and every one of us. 
for us, it all came together in June 2013, when Ferdi and I, together with a number of families in this room, attended a conference called the Never Men Seminar, a New Creation Seminar. And um, we attended that conference, and, and it changed everything for us. And the focus of that conference was that how accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior makes us a brand new person. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. So that just changed our experience. We, for the first time, experienced the love of God practically um, through people, people we'd only met about six months earlier who came to show us or I want to say they cared enough to come and present the seminar for us because six months earlier at another event, it was a men's breakfast at a local church, um, they, they met us for the first time and they realized that we were caught up in religion. They saw that there, there was a knowledge of God, but there wasn't a personal experience, a personal yeah, experience um, of God. And in that seminar, they showed us scripture after scripture of how much Jesus, through his death on the cross, made it possible for us to be free of ticking boxes and that we couldn't do anything to earn God's love and acceptance. We realized that we could boldly and confidently come to God. Um, and for the first time, we got to see ourselves through God's eyes. It was, it was an encounter with Jesus Christ, our deliverer. Um, he saved us, made us free from that pan, painful and bad experience we had with religion. Yeah. John 3, 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It was the example of Jesus. Jesus invited people who didn't tick those religious boxes of his time to follow him. An example of, of one of them was Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. Nobody liked tax collectors. I don't think people still like tax collectors. But So Matthew didn't do anything to earn this invitation, to earn the right to follow Jesus, but Jesus invited him nonetheless. Jesus chose Matthew. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God didn't only save us, that weekend or make us free from religion that weekend so that we could be good with him or acceptable to him. He saved us so that we can see through his eyes, look at the world around us through his eyes and so that we can help other people to come into a relationship with him. Um, like those people who came from they came from Cape Town, who came and helped us over that weekend um, not to be caught up in religion. Um, and he has given us all the tools we need to do that. Um, and today we have Waypoint. It's 
one of the most wonderful communities to be a part in because I can truly say I don't feel any of those churchy boxes that I felt in the previous, uh, you know, while growing up. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.18 says... All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So he has given each one of us a ministry so that we can bring others into a relationship with him. Um, to be a part of the community because reconciliation is not just between us and God, it is between us and the people around us, too. Um, maybe, maybe in your life, you still think that you have to tick boxes um, to be good enough, to belong, to earn God's love. Maybe you still think that you have to work your way into heaven like I used to. Um, maybe you think that, ah, if, if those people at church get to know me and find out who I really am, they'll reject me. Um, yeah. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us qualify. None. So, Feeling that you won't, that people won't fit in, really, I think this scripture just takes all of that away, nonetheless. Just as the snake questioned God's motive um, in the garden um, and, call, and created this trust uh, between Adam and Eve and God, he creates separation between us by, um, by us between us and God, um, when we think that we uh, might not be accepted by God, uh, when we think we won't measure up to the requirements, uh, maybe even of being a good person or a good Christian. But we have to see that those, um, that mindset, that flawed mindset, is something that is in our minds only. It is a perception that, that we don't measure up. We think that we're not good enough, that we can't do everything needed to qualify, that we've got to give up this life that we live to fit in as a Christian um, or a follower of Jesus. Um, a relationship with God is defined as, or by, defined by the unearned and unmerited love and acceptance of God. That's the kind of relationship I want to be in, where I don't have to do works, I don't have to uh, jump through hoops, I'm accepted and loved by my Father. Um, John 8.36 Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you really will be free. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved uh, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Romans 12.2, last one. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through the total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Let's change the way we think about religion. Think about God's relationship with, uh, that He wants with us. Live in the freedom of knowing that you are accepted by your Father. And by the way, the one place that you will always fit in is in the family of God. Because He created us, He created you exactly the way He wanted you, the way He needs you to be a part of His family. 
So there is no other plan that God has for the world. He only has one plan, and we are a part of that plan. People are a part of the plan. Um, for the world to see God. Because we have received um, the unmerited and unearned love of God, we can go and lavish that love on other people. Uh, people who may feel hopeless or run down or caught up in religion. Um, and we can love them with unmerited, unearned love. Uh, exactly um, like the example Jesus gave. Um, and, it all, and all of this lines up so well with um, Matthew 8, 20, uh, verse 19, that says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I, I have commanded you. Now, when I read that, it sounded like more rules and more boxes to tick. But no, we can do this from an abundance of love that we have in, inside of ourselves, that Jesus places inside of us. Not because we've got to tick boxes, but because we want other people to feel and experience the love of God that he allowed us to feel. Um, and if this is the way uh, God sees us, we are also free to look on other people um, the way that he sees them. And, and maybe, maybe they'll see a deliverer in Jesus. Um, he gave us that ministry of reconciliation to bring people to him. Um, yeah, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 and 19 says... All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was, uh, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us this amazing message. We can take it into the world. So, we are God's plan. That is why he came to deliver us from religion. And that is what, what his plan, his answer for the world is. And just imagine our communities. What would our families look like? What would our community, what would our country look like when we are able to go and unconditionally love people, not expecting anything back from them? God made a plan to deliver us from religion into relationship, not only with him, but with other people too. Can I pray for us? My Father, thank you for your unconditional, unmerited, never-ending love. Thank you that you made a way for us to be in a relationship with you where we can thrive, where we can love other people. Father, in a world where everything is about measuring up and fitting in, Lord, thank you for the freedom that we have in you that we can just be ourselves. Holy Spirit, help us to make this idea our own and help us to hear the Father's voice as he calls us into relationship with him. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.